Uh, but for now, Kosha, let's have a look at the US. Uh, Left-wing media outlets are trying to defend Kamala Harris since she's gone to ground. As we know, she's refused to give a press conference or a serious sit-down interview. MSNBC's Michael Steele defended it. Have a look. It, what has struck me since Donald Trump's um, press conference is sort of the sort of highbrow nature of the press uh, coming at Kamala Harris, saying, "Well, she, in my view, whining that she hasn't, she, she doesn't talk to us. She hasn't done a, um, a sit down with us. She hasn't done interviews with us. Right now, is there a real need for her to sort of, you know, get the imprimatur of the press on her campaign?" I mean, this is a serious issue. A presidential nominee surely needs to be open for sp scrutiny, Kosha, especially when she missed all the debates. So true. It's very frustrating, uh, you know, for citizens, for voters that are trying to ascertain how to cast their vote and who stands for what they stand for and who is going to set the country on the right direction. But if that's the question being asked, absolutely, it's very frustrating. I think where Michael Steele is right, as much as we hate to say it, is if the question is, what does it take for a candidate like Kamala Harris to win this race and run out the clock with 80 days left to go and the circumstances under which she arrived in the position of being the nominee, then some would say, actually, this is exactly the correct, correct strategy for her. The question remains, 80 days is a lifetime in politics, and will that mm. frustration from the press, uh, as favorable as they are to her, get to a point where it makes them look very foolish and they're going to force it? Or will tr Team Trump be able to somehow force her into an unscripted moment with a debate or something like that? Uh, mm. Other than that, I think this is very clear that this is her strategy and she's going to continue running with it. Yeah, indeed. Now, let's have a look at the claims by the Donald Trump campaign team that they've been hacked by Iran. This came after Politico received campaign documents via an anonymous email. This included a dossier on J.D. Vance. Um, now, Kosher, a Trump campaign spokesman said the documents were illegally obtained by foreign sources hostile to the U.S., Iran has denied responsibility. That's neither here nor there. Do you think, though, that there is credible reason for the Trump campaign to suspect that Iran might have been behind this leak? You know, it's possible. There are many, many opponents to the Trump campaign, and it's kind of remarkable how many battlefronts he has to fight on, both with domestic institutions that are against him as well as foreign. But I think it's been, you know, widely held view ever since he entered the political arena that a lot of these countries, be it Iran, be it China, be it whoever, they are less inclined to be supportive of a Trump presidency because he's unpredictable, he's, uh, you know, a bit brash, he is very America first, and that may or may not align with somebody uh, certainly like Iran, but even other countries, whereas the other side seems to be a little bit more controlled or controllable. So I, I think it's not outside the realm of possibility. Who knows? I think this is being stitched together from a statement Microsoft put out there suggesting Iran was a bad actor and something like this a couple of months ago, and then U.S. security sources are also confirming it. Um, certainly a possibility. Mm. And what do you think the polls are now telling us about Kamala Harris v. Trump? And given the polls are showing that she has a chance at winning, was the move to replace Biden with her a good one? It would seem that way for now, where she, you know, number one, definitely stemmed the tide of the cratering that was happening with Biden after that disastrous debate. So that was one issue where diehard Democrats were even abandoning him. They have come back home. So I would say that's a, a tick in her column. The second thing about the, um, the battleground states, the swing states, it certainly seems like it's tightening. There is momentum for her. But it's still, mm. uh, I think the jury is out on how this is going to go. It's going to be super close. But for now, um, it, it's certainly better yep. than the alternative, yep. which was Biden in their case. All right. Koshigata, thank you so much for your time.